Okay, final video. Here we go. I hope you've enjoyed, benefited from these uh, these little episodes. Uh, I probably haven't said any, anything new to, to most people, but it's always good in it just to kind of straighten out and work out where we're at on these things. Um, I wanted to um, just draw, draw attention to the, some remarkable footage <laughs> in the documentary of some of the seeker friendly, uh, so the seeker friendly churches. Um, it's some, there was some extraordinary footage, wasn't there, in the documentary of the lengths that some people have gone to to sort of fill the room, I guess, and to, uh, I, I guess, from a good-hearted motivation, we trust, um, to wanting to make the gospel as accessible as possible and wanting people to feel uh, as welcome in the church as possible. And... Um, there's a lot going on there. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, layers to that actually, theologically. I think that's maybe the one I want to focus on most of all is the whole thing to do with the difference between being man centred and God centred. Um, I think if the main things if the main things that we're asking is how's this going to make people feel, how will this come across, then we've got it wrong. Um, I think they're important questions to ask, but they shouldn't be the main question. The main questions are, how has God told us to do this? Because God knows people. Remember that bit where, you know, Jesus, it says of Jesus that he wouldn't entrust himself to anyone because he knew what was in man. God, God knows man. God knows what we need. For, for our good, God knows what we need for our genuine flourishing. Only he does. And so the questions we have to be asking in terms of how we do church is, how does God want it? How does God want it to be? I think once we've settled that and are clear on that, then I think, you know, it's great to ask, how can we be imaginative? How can we be creative? Um, how can we uh, be as helpful as possible? How can we remove unnecessary stumbling blocks without removing necessary stumbling blocks? Jesus is the rock of offence. He's the stone of offence. So it's important that you don't remove Jesus as the centre. Some people will trip over him. They won't be able to, they won't be able to get through. Um, that's God working out his purposes. That's, that's just beyond us. That's just, it is what it is. What that's down to is a number of things going on in the purposes of God and in the heart of the person involved that just it's that's what's going on you can't mess around you can't start removing stuff to, to get them through if they've stumbled at Jesus they've stumbled at Jesus um, but you don't want them to stumble at uh, the church feels unfriendly or the church doesn't manifest the love of God the church doesn't manifest the grace of God the church doesn't manifest the life of God Church doesn't manifest the power of God. These things are bad stumbling blocks. Um, but we're told, we're told what to do. We're told that spiritual gifts should be functioning in the life of the church. We shouldn't dull them down, but we should explain. We should, exp we should people should be able to uh, not just think this is just crazy. Yeah, if there's, if there's if people are bringing a message in another language, there should be an interpretation so people can understand. Go, oh, okay, right, that's what, that's what that was the message. Um, and prophecies come; they should come in such a way that the person, if they're an unbeliever, who it was for, they, they wow, I, that that, that, lang that that person speaking my language, you know, I understand what they're saying. It's not old English or just jargon, you know. It makes sense. So I can hear, understand what God is saying and fall on my face and get right with God, you know. Um, but I think I think there is something about, uh, it just sounds crazy, but you can sideline the Lord for the sake of the crowds, the desire for the crowds. Notice that Jesus, whenever he gathered crowds, he would take his teaching up. A notch. Whenever he gathered crowds, he would start saying things like, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And then loads of them went. Why is he doing it? Because he's not essentially after a crowd. It's not essentially what he's doing. He's after disciples. So he'll gather crowds. 
but then he won't be seduced by those crowds. He won't adjust everything so the crowds are happy. He'll say some really, really strong things to work out who's serious. Who's serious, who wants to know him, who doesn't. He'll say things that will draw a line. You go, oh, okay, I've got to make a decision. And I do think we need to think about this. I think we need to think about the belonging before you believe thing. I think you've got to think about that. I think there's some challenges with that. I understand it. I understand the heart of it. But there were some challenges there because I don't think you can actually belong to the body of Christ until you belong to Christ. So if we're giving people the impression that they belong, that they are fully part of something, but they haven't, they're not covenantally committed, they haven't turned from their sins, they haven't put their trust in Christ, we're, we're not helping them attend to the main thing. I think people should feel very welcome really really welcome i really do but i think they should know their guests as well i think they should know that they're very very welcome guests and that to be part of the family means being joined to christ through faith and repentance and that's where things like baptism comes in and becomes genuine meaningful membership marker um, i think we've got to have a lot of wisdom on this Otherwise, what you can do is you can you can pander to people's preferences, prejudices, likes and dislikes. And before you know it, you, know, you don't really know what you've got on your hands. It could look impressive, it could look big. But what is it? Um, and I think I think that we've got to have a lot of wisdom on this. Uh, and and um, remember who it's for. It's not for you. It's not so that you can feel good. You know, if you're a church leader, you feel good. Your church has grown a lot. It's not for you. It's for him. It's for him. Is it pleasing to him? Is the way we're going about this. Pleasing to him is the way that we are um, setting things up. Pleasing to him is the way we're communicating, honouring to him. And I think one of the great tests is, is to try it. And this takes time, okay? So if you're into quick fixes, you won't like this. But one of the biggest tests to be able to grow in discernment, I think, is absolutely immersing yourself in scripture for years because I think what happens is is that you become innately familiar with the tone and the emphasis of scripture and I think when you do that um, you can then you then notice when something's off not because you're looking for it boy the last thing we want is a critical spirit but you've got to be able to think critically it's important so that's how you just part of what discernment involves and sometimes you can just think this just feels off you know um the bible says that you know times are coming where people will just gather to themselves you know people that will um tickle their itching ears and uh, you know they won't want sound doctrine they won't want to hear the truths of the gospel now you know i i think that there were some of the things being said in the documentary where you know there was some emphasis on sort of street preaching and and really going for it and I, I think I agreed philosophically, you know, that, you know, come on, we've got to give the message. It's not our message, it's his gospel. We've got to be faithful with it. We can't change it. If you add to it or take things away from it, think, oh, we'll just take away repentance. Don't do that. It's not your gospel, it's his. You've got to be faithful with it. You're stewarding something. It's his gospel. Repentance is at the centre of it. I agree with it. But what I also thought was that perhaps, um, perhaps that there could also have been room for a, a bit more, uh, joy uh, and a bit more um, uh, even even I don't know how to, how to phrase it really um, imagination and and creativity so I think you wanted to bring a really strong message a message that na naturally people will just be offended at naturally not because of you because you're offensive or annoying but the message what do you mean I need forgiveness what do you mean what do you mean you know um, I've got to, I've got to change my my, my life, I've got to turn away from my sins if I want to be right with God. What do you mean? That's being faithful with the message. Um, but I think that we can do it. Also, we do it gently, uh, respectfully. Um, we don't come across as if somehow we're, we're immune from repentance, but that we come, we're hum we've been humbled by the gospel ourselves. We move towards people with love. And, and we do, you know, we, I think we just show also that like Jesus did, you know, that there's to meet people where they're at, you know, maybe actually before you know, the first thing is that there's some healing they're going to experience first, you know, a miracle of healing. Maybe that's the first thing. 
maybe it's something else. So I don't think we, we crash in clumsily and, and harshly, but I think I think I think that 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 nevertheless it's God centered, it's not man centered. Um yeah, this one is layers to this is a bit nuanced. I hope you get the rough idea that's coming through. It's been uh, uh, personally uh, enjoyable looking at some of this stuff. Hope it's helped you. And um, yeah, any sort of comments or I don't know, you know, if there was um, any other subjects that you thought would be great to just hear 10 minutes on that. Um, I'm up for it. You know, I'm up for it. Well, depends what, what it is, but, you know, I, I am theoretically up for it. So, yeah. Anyway, God bless you guys and um, see you around.